The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by The Kraft Foods Company, makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's see what Gildersleeve has on his mind. Marjorie, you know something? We ought to have Judge Hooker to dinner one of these evenings. Yes, I guess we should. Uh, see the Russians walked out again. Time passes. A week. You know, my dear, we really ought to have Judge Hooker to dinner some night. Yes, we really should. What's at the movies? Anybody know? Again, time passes. Another week. You know, by George, we ought to have the judge to dinner. We really should. Yes, we should. You hear that, Bertie? We ought to have Judge Hooker to dinner. Yes, sir. Anytime. Just let me know. Okay. <laughs> time keeps right on passing. Now, listen, everybody. We simply got to have Judge Hooker to dinner. It's just terrible. He had us to dinner weeks ago and gave you children those lovely presents. We just got to have him to dinner. Yeah, yes, we must. Bertie, we got to have the judge to dinner. Yes, sir. How about tomorrow night? Uh, we'll make it day after tomorrow. Inevitably, the day after tomorrow arrives, and with it, the judge. believe that anyone to this day has any idea who it was who stole the clapper out of the chapel bell. I don't know. You told enough people. Ah, you, you. We were devils in those days. Yes, yes. Elbows off the table, we run. I think the judge might like a little more coffee, Bertie. Well, I really shouldn't, Marjorie, but it's so absolutely delicious. Perhaps just a half a cup, Bertie. Half to two-thirds. About that far from the brim. No more. Yes, sir. Oop, plenty. Got a whole pot full here. Oh, that's a great plenty, thank you. I don't drink coffee with dinner as a rule. I find it tends to keep me awake, except on occasions when there's an evening of conversation ahead and I want to be bright and sparkling. Then I sometimes allow myself one cup. Yes, yes. Now, tonight I'm having a cup and a half. A little more than that, even. So you see, it's quite an occasion. Yes, yes. Anybody else? More coffee? Uncle Mort, coffee? Uh, no, thanks. I'll just let the judge sparkle this evening. <laughs> I'll have a cigar. Do you mind if I smoke, my dear? What? I say, do you mind if I smoke? Mind? I didn't say anything. It's customary when there are ladies present to ask their permission before smoking. Since when? Skip it. <laughs> Go get me a match, Leroy. Here, use a candle. Watch it. You want to singe my mustache? Here, give it to me. Blow some smoke rings, Unc. Not now. Let me see you make smoke come out of your eyes. Yes, make smoke come out of your eyes, Unky. Not now. My father used to be able to do that trick. So can I, Judge, if I want to. Let's see. Yes, do, Unky. Well, watch closely now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go in the living room. <laughs> oh, the Judge isn't through yet. Don't hurry, Judge. We've got all evening. Uh, you know, speaking of my father, reminds me of the time he bought me a pony. Did I ever tell you children about that? A pony? Gosh, I can't even get Unc to buy me a first baseman's mitt. You've done nothing to deserve it. Gosh, a pony. Yes, sir, a little pinto pony. I was just about your age when he got it for me, Leroy. Maybe a year older. And I want to tell you I was the proudest boy in town. Who wouldn't be? Gosh. Your father must have been nice. Don't look at me, Leroy. I never had a pony either. Uh, let's go in the living room, shall we? Judge, aren't you through yet? Now, just a few more drops here, Gildy. It's so delicious, I wouldn't think of letting it go to waste. Yes, yes. Take your time. Yep. My father used to have a theory that every boy should learn to ride a horse, learn to handle him, and take care of him. Well, I always swore that when I grew up... He felt that just being around a horse built a boy's character. And while I don't attribute mine entirely to that, I... <laughs> well, I always swore that if I ever had a son, I'd see that he had a horse. But, of course, I never had a son. 
You always got little me. <laughs> well, my boy. Couldn't we get a horse on? Couldn't we please? Just a pony. I take good care of him, honest. Where would we keep him, Leroy? It isn't as if we well, might... you could keep a horse here, Gildy, if you wanted to. You got a nice big backyard out there and all those vacant lots for him to graze in. I know, but... But you've got a two-car garage. You could build a box stall in part of it. Yeah, it wouldn't have to be very big. A pony doesn't take much room. I suppose we could even build a little addition onto it if we could find some second-hand lumber. Oh, Les, I think it'd be fun. Hey, Aunt, can we, can we, huh? Hey, now, now, my boy, the judge and I are just talking. I think it's time you said goodnight and ran along up to your room. But can we, please? I'd take awful good care of him. I wouldn't do anything else. The minute I came home from school, I... Now, Leroy, calm down. Say goodnight to the judge and run along. But can we, huh? We'll see. He wouldn't be any trouble, Unc. I'd mow the lawn without you ever telling me and feed him all the grass. It wouldn't cost you a cent. Couldn't we get just a little pony? Not if you keep bothering me about it. Okay, I won't say another word. Uh. Good night, Judge. Have to go up and do my homework now. Good night, Leroy, and pleasant dreams. Good night, Marge. If I get a pony, I'll let you ride him. You can ride him first. Why, Leroy? Good night, Unc. I hope to have a swell sleep and wake up in the morning feeling fine. Yeah. Uh, good night, Leroy. Come on, boy, get up, Scout! <laughs> oh, dear, always something. Yesterday it was a first baseman's mitt, today it's a pony. I wonder what it'll be tomorrow. <laughs> Leroy, is that you? Why aren't you asleep? Has the judge gone yet? Yes, he's gone, thank goodness. Now go to sleep. It's late. Almost midnight. Unc. Uh, yes, what is it? Can we uh, get a pony? I told you we'll see. Now go to sleep. <laughs> day long. If I had a million dollars every time I've answered that door, I'd be a millionaire. Oh, hello, Craig. I want Leroy to play with me. Leroy? He's out in the garage. I want him to play with me. Well, you better go around to the garage then, because Leroy ain't going to come around to you. Not if I know Leroy. Here, you can come through the house. Wipe your feet first, though. Wipe them. That's the way. Now, come along. How's things over at your house, Craig? Okay. I see Lily B had a lot of sheets out this week. You been having company? Nope. I saw a big blue runabout pull up into your driveway yesterday. That some friend of your daddy's or somebody? Nope. <laughs> you don't talk much, do you, Craig? Nope. There's Leroy. Leroy, here's Craig to see you. I'm busy. Well, so am I. Run along, Craig. You go see Leroy. Hi, Leroy. What you doing? Sweeping out the garage. What does it look like I'm doing? Can I sweep too? No. Why not? You're too young. Besides, I gotta get this done before Unc gets home. Why? Because he might be bringing a pony home with him. A pony? Yep. He's gonna get me a pony, all my own. Gee, can I ride him? No. Nope. Why? You're too young. Can I just pat him? No. Nope. Why? Because. Ponies don't want little kids patting them all the time. I wouldn't pat him hard. You keep your hands off him. <laughs> I don't care. My father's going to get me an airplane that'll fly with me in it. Yeah. If I give you my scooter, will you let me pat him? Nope. Now, don't be walking there. I just swept up. Is this where the pony's going to be? Yeah. The bucket's for his water, and that box is for him to eat out of. The grass is in case he wants to lie down. I pounded a big nail in here to tie him to. Pretty slick, huh? Yeah, slick. Had to move all the firewood over here to make room. Some job. Yeah, some job. How's your uncle gonna get the car out now? <laughs> well, we'll figure some way. Come on, let's go in the house. Yeah, let's go in the house. Nobody best better mess that garage up till the pony comes. Yeah, nobody better mess it up. I just cleaned out the garage, Pretty, so don't mess it up. Well, look who's talking. 
Close that door, Leroy. Close it, Craig. If I close it, can I pat the pony? No, now close it. Craig, I just this minute put a cake in the oven. You want to ruin it? Watch it, Craig, will you? You told me to shut the door. I didn't say slam it. Craig, ain't it just about supper time over there at your house? Nope. It is, too. Now, you run along out of my kitchen, you two. Go on. Come on, Craig. It's time you went home. They're looking for you. No, they're not. Yeah, too. Now, beat it. I won't go home till you let me pat the pony. You're not going to pat the pony, see? So stop asking me. I want to pat the pony. Pony, don't want kids all the time patting them. Boy, boy, what's all this? Oh, hi, um. I want to pat the pony. Stop it. There isn't any pony. No pony? And what's more, there isn't going to be any pony. Ha <laughs> ha! Craig, I think you better get along home. Go on, run along. That darn Bullard kid. Now, what's all this talk about a pony? What have you been filling him with, Leroy? But, Unc, you, you said yourself last night, you said... I know, it was merely a discussion, my boy. I was only talking with Judge Hooker. I definitely did not say we were going to get a pony. He did, too. No, I didn't. I'll admit I discussed it. We talked about it, but... You did. Leroy? I asked you and you said you'd see. Well, I didn't mean... Leroy, be reasonable. Where would we keep a horse on this place? What do you think I've been doing all afternoon? Leroy, wait a minute. Wait a minute, my boy. Leroy, now listen to reason. Wait, Leroy. Leroy. Oh. <laughs> Good evening, Bertie. I didn't see you there. Evening, sir. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> sort of looks as if I'd started something, doesn't it? Yes, sir, it sure does. Yes, sir, it sure looks like you started You meal planners know that right now asparagus tips are at their tender best. So here's a simple trick you'll want to try. Top those tips with a delicious golden cheese sauce made with smooth-melting Velveeta. Then when the family sits down to the table, just watch that tempting dish do a disappearing act. Remember the easy recipe for that sauce. Just one half pound of Velveeta melted in the top of a double boiler with one quarter cup of milk stirred in. Remember, too, it's wise to use only dependable Velveeta for this melting trick. For this delicious cheese food melts smooth every time. Velveeta sauce works wonders with cauliflower, broccoli, onions, green beans, or carrots, too. It adds rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor and helps supply high-quality complete protein and other valuable nutrients from milk. So be sure to try Velveeta. When you shop, look for the yellow package plainly marked Genuine Velveeta. For that's the cheese food of craft quality. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Well, good morning, my boy. Reading, I see. Yes, sir, nothing like a good book. What is it you're enjoying, Leroy? Something worthwhile, I hope. The encyclopedia. The encyclopedia. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of valuable information in it. Intend to read it myself one of these days. But uh, don't you think you should be outdoors playing? Beautiful sunshine, blue sky. This is a day for a ball game. I don't want to play ball. Now, my boy, this isn't like you. Uh, what is it you're reading about? Horses. <laughs> Uh, Leroy, I'm sorry there was a misunderstanding about the horse. Misunderstanding? You broke your promise, that's all. Now, my boy, let's not use words recklessly. You said I could have a horse. You said I could keep him in the garage. You promised. But I was just considering it as a possibility. It's an impossibility. Don't you understand? You broke your promise. <laughs> Leroy, I don't want you unhappy. If you really think I broke my promise, let me make it up to you some other way. Uh, what would you like? Nothing. The first baseman's mitt? Seems to me I heard you mention that. No. I don't like to see you in this frame of mind, my boy. You're just sitting around here brooding. What you need is a little fun. Suppose we go out and play ball for a while. What do you say? Well, if you want to. I'm dying to. Come on. <laughs> Well, 
That's all the shells, Leroy. Good fun, wasn't it? Would have been more fun on horseback. <laughs> well, how would you like a chocolate soda, Leroy? Okay, I guess. <laughs> Have another one, my boy? I might. <laughs> no, I, I guess three's enough. Uh, thanks, son. <laughs> yeah, that's more like it. Happy now, my boy? Well, no, not happy. Oh, for goodness sake. Have a heart, Leroy. Be reasonable. I am. No, you're not. You're ungrateful. Come on, let's go home. Peavy. What's he doing back there? Peavy. He's going to try another soda. No, no. Just want to pay you, Peavy. How much is three chocolate sodas? And that'll be 45 and uh, two cents for the government. It's all right. <laughs> Here, take it out of this. 47 out of one dollar. Confounded Leroy, don't look so glum. Smile, can't you? Be reasonable. I am reasonable. No, you're not either. Leave it to Mr. Peavy here. Listen, Peavy. 47, 50, 75, one dollar. Thank you. Let's call again. Look, Peavy, I've spent all day trying to make it up to Leroy for a little misunderstanding. Oh, sure, that's it. That's pretty much Peavy's birthday. <laughs> no, no. I said something last night, and he thought I meant something else. Just a misunderstanding, but I've tried all day to make it up to him, and he just acts unreasonable, that's all. Uh, what was the misunderstanding? He promised to buy me a horse. I did not. Well, that's a misunderstanding, all right. <laughs> but he just imagined it. It was all in his mind, Peavy. The way he's acting, you'd think the world was coming to an end. Mr. Gillespie, did, did you ever have a disappointment as a child? Of course I did. Hundreds of them. That's what childhood is for. I know. I, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> A big disappointment can leave a child marked for life. I, I was reading an article in the paper about that just the other day. So it says a lot of burglars are nothing but disappointed children. I've had plenty of disappointments, and I'm no burglar. Well, I... Don't get me wrong, Pete. <laughs> I know what it is to want a pony and not get it, Pete. Why, I've been knocking myself out all day. I played one a cat till I couldn't run another step. I took him to Daly's and let him shoot my pistol. And these sodas, three of them. What does the boy want? I guess he wants a horse. That's right, Mr. Peavy. I feed him and take care of my children. Never mind. Confounded Peavy, you can't keep a horse in Summerfield. Uh, Mr. Gillespie, I, I have a suggestion. I don't want to hear it. Well, if you don't want to hear a reasonable suggestion. Well, what is it? You know Floyd Munson's cousin Earl? Uh, Floyd has a little farm a few miles the other side of town. No, I've been out there. I believe he has a horse. I can't buy a horse, Peavy. You wouldn't have to buy him, but maybe you could arrange to let Leroy ride him once in a while. Oh, um, do you think you could? By George, I might be able to make a deal with Earl at that. Rent the horse for the hour. Leroy, you could go out there every Saturday. Would you like that? Oh, boy, every Saturday. Often or in summer, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Would that cheer you up, my boy? Oh, boy, would it? <laughs> well, let's go out there and see what we can arrange. So long, Peavy. This is a farm, Leroy. Think you'd like to live on a farm, my boy? A ranch would be better. What's that smell? <laughs> All farms have that. <laughs> dusty, isn't it? <coughs> yeah, it's dusty, all right. Wonder where Earl is. This time of day, he's liable to be feeding the pigs. Somebody just pulled up the shade in the window upstairs. They're looking out. Huh? Maybe Earl was taking a snooze. Wait and see if he comes out. Gee, that smell is terrific. <laughs> what is it? Pigs, partly. <laughs> Chickens, partly. Here comes somebody around the side of the house. Oh? Oh, that's Earl. Hi, Earl. Remember me? Hi, Mr. Gillisleeve, Earl. You remember me, friend of Floyd's? We rented a sleigh from you one time. <laughs> 
I remember. Want to rent the sleigh again? Uh, not in April, Earl. <laughs> and now, uh, this is something else. I understand you have a horse. Yep. Well, uh, this is my nephew, Leroy Earl. Hi. Hi. Uh, this young fellow somehow got the idea he'd like to ride a horse. And I thought maybe if your horse was suitable, uh, if you had a saddle, maybe we could rent the horse occasionally, uh, by the hour. Uh, rent him? I couldn't let you have to take him off the place. Oh, naturally. But if the boy could just ride him around for an hour or so... Uh, a lot of trouble. How much you think of paying for an hour? Uh, well, anything fair. Pay for the wear and tear on the horse, and your time and everything. Uh, say a dollar an hour. Oh. Could we see the horse? Uh, yes, I guess so. Have you got a saddle? Yeah, how about that? Uh, no saddle. I just ride him bareback with a bridle. Unc, I can learn to ride bareback. I might wind up in a circus. I'm aware of that danger, Leroy. <laughs> is the uh, horse safe, would you say, Earl? What? I say, is the horse safe? Sure he's safe. He's locked up in his stall. <laughs> right this way. Hey, Unc, it smells better in here. Yeah, that's horses. <laughs> What's that? Uh, that's Dandy kicking up his heels. Wait, I'll bring him out here where you can get a good look at him. Seems lively, doesn't he? Yeah. Come here, you ornery son of a gun. No, oh, no, no, you don't. <laughs> don't try to bite me either. I'm on to you, you no good. <laughs> Stand back, Leroy. Don't worry. Nice, dandy boy. Nice boy. <laughs> Come on, boy. Uh, nothing to be afraid of, sonny. Well, there he is. <laughs> Big, isn't he? Stands about 16 hands. Hey, come on, Sonny, pat him. He likes kids. Yeah? Go on, pat him, Leroy. You pat him first. Yeah, well, all right. Uh, nice horsey. Yeah? <laughs> What's the matter? He didn't do nothing. No, but I thought he was gonna... Uh, how old is the horse, Earl? Oh, he's young yet. Going on 18. <laughs> That's so? Uh, let's see his teeth. If you want to look at his teeth, you open his mouth. Well, I don't doubt your word, Earl. Horse looks about 18. Hey, I saw his teeth just then when he yawned. They're yellow. All horses' teeth are yellow, my boy. They're so big. Like the keys on a piano. Uh, why don't you climb up on him, Sonny? See how it feels. I, I don't feel like it. Oh, why don't you try him? Uh, I'm not so sure he could hold me. Oh, he can hold you all right. <laughs> he tried to bite you. <laughs> He's only fooling. He's good-natured when you get to know him. Get up on him, mister. He rides good. It was my nephew who wanted to ride, not me. What's the matter? Aren't you scared? Certainly not. Well, go ahead. Give him a ride. Well, I never rode bareback. <laughs> Will he hold still while I'm out, Earl? Oh, sure. Well, here, hold my hat, Leroy. Okay. Here, uh, just hold the bridle in your left hand till you get on. Left hand, huh? Uh. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, um, uh, how do I get up there? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Here. Here's a box you can stand on. Oh, thanks. I still may need a little shove. If you need one, I'll give it to you. Go on, throw your leg over. Throw my leg over, yes. Yeah. Nice, Dandy. <laughs> well, here goes. Oh, give me a shot. Oh. Hey. Gee. Well, Leroy, here I am. How does it feel? Fine. He's a fine horse. Splendid animal. Well, no use overdoing it. Look out, Leroy. I'm getting off. <laughs> yeah, he's certainly got a lot of pep for his age, Earl. <laughs> Want to try him, Leroy? Thanks. Oh, he's a remarkable horse, my boy. Must have some thoroughbred in him to have all that spirit. Yes, Earl, he's a splendid piece of horse. Uh, he sure is. Uh, would you like to buy him, mister? Well... A uh, nice horse for the boy. I'll let you have him for $50. <laughs> Look out! 25 uh, I'm, uh, I'm not sure I want a horse now. I've been thinking about what you said. About how inconvenient it would be in the garage. 
But I don't understand, Leroy. All day you've been telling me how much you wanted a horse. Now, here's this splendid animal. I know, Unc, but... Well, I guess I've been selfish, that's all. I've been thinking of myself instead of thinking of others. Yeah, yeah. I, I think instead of a horse, I'd like a first baseman's mate. Ha! Too late, Leroy. What? You missed your chance for the first baseman's mitt this morning. Well, you can't blame me for trying. Come on, Uncle, let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> We've all heard a lot about the precious protein foods, how important these muscle builders are in the daily diet. Now, the famous cheese food, Velveeta, is an excellent protein food. Whenever you spread Velveeta for snacks or slice it for hearty sandwiches, whenever you melt Velveeta for a glorious cheese sauce, you're giving the family a high-quality, complete protein. Delicious Velveeta also helps supply milk minerals, food energy, riboflavin, and vitamin A. And this pasteurized cheese food is as digestible as milk itself. That's why genuine Velveeta is considered one of your best buys for nutrition. And the entire family will really go for its rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. Be sure to look for genuine Velveeta, the cheese food of craft quality. <laughs> I have a special message for all those who were listening to this program last Easter Sunday. We've received many inquiries from listeners who wondered why Mr. Kraft was not heard in his annual Easter message after I had introduced him. He was to have spoken from Chicago, but due to a network equipment failure beyond our control, his talk was not transmitted. That is why I read his timely message. Good night, folks. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Leroy, Marjorie, and Bertie are played by Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, and Lillian Randolph. Judge Hooker is Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand plays Mr. Peavy. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Here's how to bring out hidden flavors in meat. Add new zest to salad dressings. Create new interest in vegetable, egg, and cheese dishes. It's easy as can be. Simply add an extra flavor tang to your foods with Kraft Salad Mustard. You can use this delicately spiced golden salad mustard for blending into cooked dishes or in an equally appetizing way as a spread for sandwich meats. Also stock up on this other popular variety. Kraft Mustard with snappy horseradish added. Get both of these fine craft mustards when you shop tomorrow. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com. Dot com.